Greetings friends, welcome. Today we're talking about SSR with web components, which is a problem. Uh, currently, when you statically generate a site using server-side rendering, it's using Node.js and there's no browser there. So that makes a problem with web components because they like to call attached shadow, which is creating DOM objects which don't exist. Um, so in a lot of cases, it just will not work. You won't get a web component rendered when you um, use SSR in sites that you know will certainly statically generated sites you know things like next um, and gatsby gatsby we'll look at today um, it's quite a big problem so there's various ways around this and today we're going to look at stencil and how it solves this problem so i'll just create a quick app in gatsby and we'll create a demo stencil component and um, see how it works all right so Got a folder in here. Let's create a Gatsby um, website to start. So we can just use the template here and I'll take all the defaults. I just won't get, we won't get anything added just as, as, um, as clean and small as we can for Gatsby. So Gatsby does a build beforehand. It's a static site generator compared to server rendered on request. So we build everything up front and it uses Node.js, as I said before. So a lot of web components are gonna struggle. Um, but Stencil has a way around this and we'll look at this um, as soon as this is ready. All right, um, let's open that up quickly. And we'll do a Gatsby develop just so we can see this site coming up. Uh, oh, I need to change into it there. Okay, so we can start it up with Gatsby develop. And if I bring something up to view this in, Right, so I bring that over. This is uh, this is our Gatsby website that we use, and we're going to put a web component. Uh, we'll just place it above there to start with. Okay, so let's just put that down for now. Let's close that off. Um, I'll come back in here. All right, so I'm going to make a folder for our web component now. So let's have a packages folder. We can put it up here, uh, and then we'll do an npm in it stencil which will allow us to select component and so we're going to create a web component and we're going to call it my component that's cool uh, again we're going to need to change into there and run an install Uh, right, so I'm going to build this in its default state with none of the extra SSR goodness that Stencil provides, and we'll show that that doesn't work, and then we'll upgrade it to get it to work. So we do an npm run build that will create the distribution for us, and then I can do an npm link in here, which will allow us to use it within our Gatsby project um without actually putting it up onto npm i'll just get rid of that over there make this a bit bigger um right so to pull that in we can do an npm link my component that should mean we've got it in here right so if i wanted to add that in now i would just come into my main page you would think uh in here let's get rid of that okay that's not the page let's go into source uh, index.html what file am i in here i'm in my component whoops okay let me let me go back in here and into um my Gatsby sites 
open that one up. Yeah, we're good. Um, all right, and then go into our pages into index.js. And if we scroll down, and then so we showed the page before, I'm going to try and put it just above this congratulations part. So let's put it in here. So we would like to just put it in like my component, like so, uh, and import it at the top as well. like that so that is what you would like to do in a world where web components work in statically generated sites without any extra help um if i come in here and do the gatsby develop again should build okay um it'll just won't really it won't really recognize that my component um, some web components would blow up at this stage if they access the window component. Um, Stencil doesn't, so it manages to avoid an error, but we just won't see anything. So if I come into the page, give it a refresh, there's still nothing appearing above that congratulations. And if we look in, um, we look in the dev tools, make this bigger. And we click on congratulations, we should see, let's make it a bit bigger. Where are you? Yeah, you're above. Okay, that's fine. So there's our component, um, and it's naught times naught. So it's not, um, it's not converted it into our um our web component we should display a name so you say hello world and a name so it's going nothing so it's, it's literally just not working no error but it's not working all right now what we can do is go back into the stencil component and add in that we would like this to work with ssr so there's a couple of things we need to do we need to come into our uh, stencil config and we need to say down the bottom here we want to give it another type and say dist hydrate script. Now, what this means is why does that give me an error? Okay, we'll see. No, it's not an error. Is it an error or not? It shouldn't be an error. It looks fine. Oh, it's got a comma in there. We're going to try and build it. What this should do um, is generate a whole extra version of our component um, that is that is generated not using Shadow DOM, but it'll generate the HTML that our component would show initially. Um, and then it allows us to upgrade that HTML into a proper web component. So to create a shadow root when we hydrate it on the client. Um, so let's have a go. Let's do an, an NPM run. Oh, actually, I do need to do one other thing as well now. So this will create us that script. Um, but by default, Stencil specifies which files are put out. And because of that, we need to explicitly say that we're going to have a hydrate folder as well so that Gatsby can pick that um, as well. Um, so let's do an npm run build now. I'm in the wrong folder. Okay. Now let's run build. Oh, it yeah, it just it noticed that that um, hydrate 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 like that. Okay, cool. All right, well, there's a legit error. 
fair play. All right, give it a run. Okay, now you can see there was an extra file. And we come up here now, we've got this hydrate folder. A lot of scripts in there. Um, but it, it uses the hydrate and the loader folder. So then we've got these two versions. Um, yeah, we've got the HTML version that we can use for the statically generated site. And then once that is pulled down to the client, we can hydrate it, which means turning it into a proper web component with interactivity and the JavaScript. Um, so that's good in here. Um, I don't, we don't need to do a link again, I don't think. That's, that should be good on our stencil side. I'm going to close that off. Yep. And then now, back in Gatsby, uh, we also need to use those. So there's a plugin for this, and we're going to pull that in now as well. So let's have a look for Gatsby plugin stencil. And if we come in here... I can grab this little text here, go into, um, let's do it in here. Let's stop that build. Get the copy to work. Uh, now, I do need to put force on here because this is only um, looking for Gatsby version 2. I mean, it does work with version 4, um, but it would moan if I don't put force on there. So we'll install it with that override. You can see it asking for 2 here. Uh, and once that is in place, we just need to... If we scroll down on this Gatsby plugin stencil, we need to add it to our plugins. So I'll just grab all of that there. Hopefully that will finish in a minute, but while it's not, I can just come into Gatsby config and add that in to our won't copy each time. Copy. Add that into our plugins. We need to change one thing. We need to specify our package. Now ours is called my component. Like so. Uh, and we also need to create a Gatsby browser. So let's do Gatsby browser.js. And in here, we want it to tell it about um, the, how to use the loader. And we do that by doing um, custom element. Uh, no, it's define custom element. Define custom element elements. And we're just going to pull that in from my component. And that, that loader folder that we had that we saw before. And then we can call define custom elements like so. And that should be Gatsby happy. Um, we've got the plugin, we've updated the config. Um, and we've created that Gatsby browser. So that's all it needs to, to hook into that stencil stuff. Um, so if I now do a Gatsby build, so I want it to, um, I want to show it with JavaScript on and off just so we can see the differences. Um, and it won't work on the dev one. Uh, I can't resolve my component. Okay, npm link. Let's do another relink my component cool oops yes be build and that should work once it's built I can actually go into the code actually to look at that so that's created if we come into the Gatsby site and look in public and scroll down to index html what we'll see now that so here's my component and it looks a little different it's been fleshed out um, it's actually got just plain html here with what our component would show um, and you can see some classes added and so these will get hooked into 
when we hydrate it and turn it into uh, an actual web component. But at the moment, it's just HTML, um, which is great. So, you know, Google coming to this page will see that and be able to index it, no problems. Uh, and the build worked as well. And then once we hydrate it, it should be interactive. Right, so I can open this up now. If I do a, um, a Gatsby serve, and then we go on to um, 9,000. So you can see that it's not there at the moment. Now with our changes, we have got this text of the component coming up. Um, if I come into index here and we scroll down to it again where we've defined it, here's my component, we can say first, We can specify a, pra um, a property on an attribute. Uh, and if I refresh, no, I would need to rebuild it for that to come out. Let's do that though, because I just want to see that a bit better. So th with the Gatsby develop, you can see those changes on the fly with build. It's just a static build. So we would need to redo it again. Let's serve it. Um, and if I come in here now and refresh, we get that attribute um, being populated there. And if we come back into the code um, and into index, we can see, you know, it's physically just placing that in for us at build time. All right. Um, What does it look like in the browser then? So the browser now, will it be this or will it have hydrated it and would we have a shadow root? Well, we can go and look in there. Uh, if I click on this guy, you can see it's actually hydrated it here. Uh, I can make it a bit bigger as well, just to again, that can go over. So we've got a shadow root. Um, We've got our component with our text and it says hydrated for the class there. So it's operated on the client side. It's changed it from that static um, HTML. Now we can see this really well in action. If I go into um, settings here and I turn off JavaScript, close that down. Now with no JavaScript, I'm going to refresh this page. We've still got the text coming here from our web component, which needs JavaScript normally. You create it and you call attach shadow. Um, but you can see in here again now, we haven't got a shadow root. It's, it's, it's just showing the plain HTML again, um, which is what our initial static page generation contained. So this hasn't been hydrated yet. Uh, it's just the HTML. So there you go. Um, Stencil works with SSR and statically generated sites. Getting It gets around it in its own method. Um, it's not a solution that's, you know, there's, there's no global solution out there really as yet. Like Lit Element is looking at doing this using um, declarative shadow DOM. Uh, whether there'll be a universal approach that all web components will take in the future, I don't know. But at the moment, Stencil have fixed it, solved it for themselves, uh, and that works really well. Uh, so there you go, Stencil SSR. Hope that was interesting. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you liked it. Uh, thumbs down if not. Don't forget to click that subscribe button below, and you'll get updates for future videos. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time. Bye.